Good day, my friends. May God bless all of you, your family members, your neighbors, friends, colleagues, everyone through you. And in order for him to do so, you need to receive from him the blessing itself, which is the Holy Spirit. When a person receives the Holy Spirit, he has a distinguished life from the lives of others. I would like you to pay attention to this Holy Scripture. I'm sure you already know it. But we would like to put it in a way in which you can awaken an intelligent faith, a conscious faith, a rational faith, not a vulgar faith or religious faith which does not solve anything, not an emotional faith which also does not solve, not a faith about feelings which also does not resolve anything, but an intelligent faith. A, a faith which thinks, weighs, analyzes, evaluates before taking decisions, which is faith focused, sustained, based, founded upon the Word of God. Let us go to the scripture and then reason, meditate, read with us, please. Look there. Look what God spoke. God spoke. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. Before this scripture, God said that as the rain comes down and does not return there, before watering the earth and making it bring forth in bud, so is my word. It shall not return to me empty. The word which comes out of my mouth will not return to me void. But it shall accomplish that what I please. My friends, the secret of life is faith. And the secret of faith is to lean upon the word of God. It's for you to sustain your thoughts, your ideas, your choices upon the word of God according to the word of God. For example, just for the sake of an example, the word of God teaches us to forgive. But then you say, come on, Bishop, how am I going to forgive if my heart, if I have, I do not have control over my heart. My heart hates this person. This person did something evil against me. I was ill-treated. I was abused when I was a child. And until today, I suffer the consequences of this. How will I forgive a person who abused me in my childhood, who stole my innocence away and created in me the physical state, spiritual state, emotional state of a disgrace, so much so that I live a torment of an unbearable depression I cannot live with. I cannot live because of what this person did with me. It's true. The heart, my friend, we have no control over it. We have no control. It hates, it hates, it loves, it loves. But that's how it is. You love those who despise and those who love you, you despise. How will you control this heart, this criminal heart, this deceitful heart, this malicious, diabolic heart, which leads us to love those whom we shouldn't and those whom we shouldn't love, we love. Or rather, those we should love, we don't love. So forget this heart, put it aside. 
think reason. Use faith, not with your heart. Do not found heart upon your heart, but upon reasoning, thinking. So right now, this moment, this instance, you read this word, what God said. God said, my word, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth, it shall not return to me void. So we're talking about forgiveness, for example. How can I forgive? Jesus taught us to forgive. How will I forgive if my heart tells me to, that I hate? If I don't have that desire to forgive. So it's obvious. God will never ask us to do something we cannot do. Yes or no? Will Jesus perhaps ask you to forgive if you cannot forgive? No, he's not crazy. He knows our heart is deceitful. So he does not deal with it this way. Forgiveness needs to be done in the mind, in the intellect, in the reasoning. You need to forgive in order to obey the word of Jesus. Look, Jesus, my heart hates this person. However, however, since you told me to forgive, then my mind, I have control over my mind. When I speak, when I think, when I reason, so then I'm using my intellect. So in my intellect and in my intelligence, I want to obey your word. So I pray for this person who did evil against me. I forgive this person who did evil and I also pray for him. So you are obeying the word of God regardless of the feelings of your heart, regardless of what your heart tells you. Even if your mind says, I forgive so and so, your mind says that, but your heart says, no, I don't. I, I hate this conflict you can overcome when you begin to obey the word of God. Is this difficult? No, it's not. It's not. It is not difficult. It's not difficult because you have control over your mind, over reasoning. Is it not so? When you are reading the word of God, you are absorbing the spirit of it. You are drinking of the Holy Spirit. And because you have a sound mind, you want to obey it because you know that the word of God will create, will give, conceive a new life inside of you. Even if your heart feels the opposite, the opposite, the contrary, hatred against the person, but it doesn't matter. Here in your mind, you say, I forgive. My God, my mind does not want to, my heart does not want to forgive this person, but in my mind, where I do have control over my being, which is my mind, I say, I forgive so and so. So then you obeyed the word of God. You manifested the intelligent faith. This is what Jesus said. This is what the Lord Jesus said in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 14. Jesus said that he who has my commandments, my laws, which is the word, and keeps them, he obeys, he practices. He loves me. It is he who loves me. So one cannot love God with the heart. You have to love God with your mind. Especially because the heart wants to see, wants to feel, wants to touch, wants to hear the one who is loved. Is it not so? Very well. The heart wants to feel. But we cannot have or control the feelings of the heart. We cannot control the heart, but we do have the capacity to control our mind. So Jesus said, he who has my commandments, he who has my commandments in his mind, which is my word, and keeps them, practices, obeys, it is he who loves me. Is the, this is what matters, the one who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, 
and I will love him and manifest myself to him, which is the baptism with the Holy Spirit, which means the love of the Father, the love of the Son, and the baptism with the Holy Spirit have nothing to do with the heart, with the feelings of the heart. It has to do with intellect, with intelligence. When you practice the Word of God, then you are loving God because His Word is His Spirit. When you, when we meditate, meditation is in the mind, not in the heart. Can someone meditate with the heart? No. One can only meditate with the mind. When one goes to varsity, he does not think with his heart, he thinks with his mind. It's not like that, it's just not how uh, a lawyer, a doctor, an engineer is formed, all the teachers are formed. We will even have a special moment for the teachers. But what I would like to say is that when a person goes to varsity, he does not use the heart, he uses the mind. Even if the heart does not feel like studying, even if the heart says no, no to spending more time praying or spending more time studying, studying, even if the heart says no, but the person who is wise, the person has a sound mind, he invests his mind, his intellect to study, to know what will be needed in the exam. There are the, the final exams coming up and the learners, those who want to go to varsity, they do not look to the heart, they look to the mind, is it not so? They invest in the mind and the intelligence and so is the Word of God. When you invest in the Word of God, when you invest your mind in the Word of God and you practice this teaching, this teaching of it, then you are loving God. And obviously God Father will love you, will love you, God's Son will love you and the Holy Spirit will come upon you, the baptism with the Holy Spirit. So Bishop, does this, does this mean that I need to despise my heart if I want to have communion with God? Exactly. God is spirit. God is not a soul. God is a spirit. And in order for us to have communion with him, we need to be in spirit, which means intelligence, knowledge. God is knowledge. Is it not so? So how can a person, how can a person be in spirit if he gives a gap to the feelings of the heart? It's not possible. It's not possible. God is spirit. God is not soul. God is not a feeling. God is spirit. Intelligence. My friends, start to read the Bible with this mind. Meditate. And at the same time, seek to find out how will you practice that which you read and meditate upon? Because the word of God is spirit and truth. When it comes to us, it passes His Spirit of the Word within us. When we read the Word of God, God is speaking to us. And when He speaks, there is no way for His speech to return to Him void. No, it happens. It takes place. This is the secret of the intelligent faith.